Ubisoft made recently some huge announcements about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. We also got to see more gameplay footage and learn the story and how the game will handle. Here are things we've learned and other new info you need to know about the game. The game will be an open world, first person, action adventure game which will explore the planet of Pandora. The game will be out for the next gen only, meaning PS5, Xbox, S and S, PC and Amazon Luna. And the launch date is 7 December 2023. If you play the game on the PS5, you will get the Aranehe Warrior Pack, which are character and weapons cosmetics. On other platforms, this pack can be purchased in the in-game store. If you pre-order the game, you will get the Child of Two Worlds pack, including a gear set and a weapon skin. The Standard Edition will cost $70, the Gold Edition is $110 and the Ultimate Edition is $130. The Gold Edition comes with a Season Pass. It will come with two future DLCs, a bonus mission, a unique Banshee skin and a Resistance Equipment Pack with one character gear set and one weapon. The Ultimate Edition comes with everything in the Gold Edition plus a digital art book as a collectible in addition to the Sarento Heritage Cosmetic Pack which has a character cosmetic set, a premium weapon skin, a Banshee cosmetic set and the Sarento Hunter Equipment Pack. We also need to know that the game is built using the Snowdrop engine, one which has been enhanced since the previous versions. The story begins with the RDA expanding the western frontier. You and other Navi are abducted and they try to teach you their ways and turn you against your own people. As a result of the Battle of the Hallelujah Mountains, you are put into cryo sleep and you are awakened 15 years later. From this point on you will start fighting against the RDA and try to collaborate with the other Navi clans. So there isn't anything in common with the movies in this game. James Cameron also commented regarding the story saying, I don't tell them what to do, they know their world, they know their business, their market, we just keep a close eye that they don't do anything that's not canonical in terms of Navi culture and what the RDA is doing on Pandora. We also know that next to the main story there will also be side quests in the game. Pandora will have many different and unique biomes. We have the Kinglor forest full of life and dense vegetation with floating mountains above. The Ara Nahe live in these mountains and they will teach you to fly the Ikran. You can name, feed and customize this beast. More to the north you will reach the upper plains. Here the nomadic Zeswa clan lives and they are in symbiosis with a huge beast called Zakru. From them you will learn the art of riding their horses. To the west on the map we have the Clouded Forest. We have here the Kametire, they are a clan of healers. In the world of Pandora the RDA have different facilities which explore the planet and which pollute the environment and hurt the animals. You can destroy these camps and help the planet heal. The world will look different at night as opposed to the day, it will have a lot of details. Because of the snowdrop engine the bioluminescence will make the world feel more vibrant and alive. Ray tracing will be included for the game and the dynamic weather will feel even more real. The world of Pandora can be explored on foot, in vehicles, on mounts or in the air and is filled with flora, fauna and enemies. It will also be interesting to see how the NPCs will be able to understand the state of the world and how the system will work. The developers confirmed that the world is alive and that the NPCs are closely tied to the state of Pandora. When it comes to the weapons, we find out from the gameplay trailer that you will be able to use your bow and also the rifles. You have two types of slots for bows and two for rifles and the fifth slot which equips a taser. The sixth slot shows the slings, this can be used to set up traps. And all these have different types of ammo available. You can use also the aside rifle, the shotgun and the rocket launcher. The long bow is useful for hitting long range targets but against aerial enemies your e crane is the best help you can get. Your strength will be useful against AMP units. You will use instincts to have an overview of the battlefield and mark targets and identify weak points. Once you destroy the RDA facilities you will be able to get better materials and build better gear and weapons. You also have the option to cook and make meals to get stronger. These new resources will grow in an area which you cleared from the RDA. You have a skill tree which allows you to do upgrades like move through the world faster or upgrade your stealth. These will be available after you connect with Ewa and are able to access memories of your ancestors. So you will be able to master different combat styles, try a stealthy approach or go guns blazing. You will have the possibility to play the campaign single player or on a co-op with a friend online. So the maximum players available is 2 and it can be done only for the main story missions. 
Hope this video worked well for you, thank you very much for watching the entire video, don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe and I wish you all the best, goodbye.